not my shining moment in uh, the spotlight. It's very embarrassing what's happening to me and the situation I find myself in. Mm -hmm. um, however innocent I tell people I am, I can't disclose why I'm innocent because I have a trial to go through. Hey you and welcome. My name is Mike and in this video, what we're going to look at is a truly bizarre case because what happened was, in 2017, Leon Jacob and his partner, Valerie McDaniel, hired a hitman to take out both of their exes. And they didn't know the hitman was an undercover cop. And then after that, the uh, story takes a tragic turn. What we're going to do in this video is look at the lead up to Leon and uh, Valerie's just batshit plot and the aftermath. So, let's do this. In 2017, 48-year-old Valerie McDaniel was uh, doing pretty well as a veterinarian living in a pretty well-to-do, uh, wealthy Houston neighborhood. She had a pretty decent practice healing animals and owned a beach house on Tiki Island. She had been married to her husband, Marion Mac McDaniel, who was also her partner in the veterinarian practice. They had been married for 17 years. They had divorced not so long ago, but shared custody of their nine-year-old daughter. According to those who knew them, uh, their marriage eh, wasn't the best, it was pretty rocky. I mean, obviously they got divorced, seemingly stemming from him just never being around. Allegedly, he was also cheating on her too, so yeah, yeah, that'll, that'll do it. And so she wasn't in the uh, best form after the divorce until she met good old. Leon Jacob. Leon, he was the son of her neighbor and also a divorce attorney. I'm sure Leon got all the juicy details. He was nine years younger than her, at 39 years old. Sparks flew, and the two began living together in early 2017. They would cook together, share bank accounts, and were uh, allegedly planning on getting married. But um, mm, Valerie's friends, they had a bad feeling about uh, old Leon. In 2005, at age 25, Leon graduated from medical school in uh, Grenada, the Caribbean island. Afterwards, he had surgical training in a series of residency programs at different hospitals, but never quite got there and never received a medical license. Eventually, he was let go from his last program in Texas. He then moved to Ohio and entered another residency program there. But a manager said he lied about patient care following surgery, and he also lacked medical knowledge overall, which is which I kind of would think is pretty uh, important for a doctor. But what do I know? He was eventually terminated from that program. In 2012, Leon was arrested after robbing the house of a hospital administrator in Ohio. And like uh, Leon's medical career, some of his past relationships they uh, weren't the best. He too had been previously married, with his ex-wife divorcing him after 11 years, and then later pressing charges against him for aggravated stalking and intimidation. He would call, text, email, threatening to, well, uh, threatening to beat the bejesus out of her. He would eventually serve probation for cyber harassment, and the other charges would be dismissed. Nice guy. We haven't even started yet. In 2016, Leon moved to Houston, and began dating Megan Vericas. In January 2017, police were called to their home after an argument, in which Leon grabbed her face and wounded her lip. That assault charge would eventually be dropped, but in February 2017, Leon was charged with stalking Megan at her workplace after she ended their relationship. Uh, yeah, Leon was also living with Valerie at the time, while he was still stalking his ex-girlfriend. And so, even though his uh, medical skills were shite, Leon was like, oh, bollocks, if I get convicted of stalking, there goes my shitty medical career. Better do something, better do something drastic. And so, uh, Leon, he came up with a uh, little old plot. And was like, oh, Megan, might be better if she, uh, you know, wasn't around, wink wink. And so, Leon gave $5,000 to Cartier watches and a laptop to a former US Army Sergeant and Purple Heart recipient who went by the alias Zack. Real name Moataz Aza, 
I have no doubt I butchered that. But he gave them to uh, Zack as payment to take her out and not to dinner. Uh, Zack, he took this payment and just did a legger. When Leon couldn't find Zack, Leon then reached out to a bail bondsman to help find him. This guy had gotten Leon out of jail on bond for the stalking charge, and he'd also put a bond for Zack on an unrelated matter, and so Leon thought he might know where to find him. And so upon hearing of the plot and why Leon needed to find Zack, he uh, immediately contacted the police and Megan was taken to a safe house. Police were then able to track down uh, Zack and they convinced him to, to play along maybe with uh, their investigation just a little bit. And so, with police listening in and telling him what to say, Zack called Leon and told him he had outsourced the job to another hitman by the name of Javier. Javier, he was a, uh, he was an undercover cop in the Houston Police Department. Now this is when things get interesting because during that phone call when Zack called Leon to tell him that he had outsourced the job to Javier, Leon said, will he take care of both issues? A second hit was being requested. Whom? Well, Valerie's ex-husband, Mac. And so Leon, Valerie, Javier and Zack, they went for a Lovely old dinner at uh, Olive Garden to chat a bit about, um, assassination. Apparently, Valerie's ex-husband, Mac, was trying to take their daughter away, so he needed to be taken out of the picture, too. Valerie told Javier she wanted him gone, and told him what kind of car he drives, where he can be found, where he lives, and other personal information, so friggin' Agent 47 over here can give him the old piano wire. Another $10,000 was requested and promised by Valerie. And so this is when the story takes kind of a, a comedic turn, but uh, not for long, don't worry. So the police decided to work with both Mac and Megan, the supposed targets of this assassination plot. So to kind of continue this along, the police got Mac to pose like he'd been killed in a carjacking gone wrong, and that Megan had been kidnapped. They took pictures so they would have proof to bring to Leon and Valerie. These are those pictures. Javier then popped over with the pictures, taken to prove they were sleeping with the fish, and received another $1,800. On Friday, March 10th, 2017, I, I guess the police felt like they had enough of messing around with the couple. And so that night, officers arrived at the home to inform Leon and Valerie that Mac McDaniel had been found dead. What's going on? What he wants to do is establish an alibi, let you know right away it's not him. You know, and then feigning that surprise, it, it was all rehearsed, in my opinion. Leon and Valerie, they were shocked to hear this. And the police, as you can imagine, they were like, yeah, uh, you're under arrest. Can I put some on your Yeah, we're going to take care of you, okay? Put the movie on the way from your medical service. I don't know why I'm being arrested. I mean, I, I don't know why I'm being arrested. Okay, well, I think just told you. Communication, okay. Just 
And while they were being arrested, uh, Valerie's daughter was in the apartment at the time. So before the police took Valerie into custody, they allowed uh, Valerie to get her daughter and hand her off to her ex-husband, Mac, who was standing outside in the hallway the entire time. Now to the latest on that murder for hire plot involving a couple and their exes. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jonathan Martinez. And I'm Sion Rhodes. 48 year old Valerie McDaniel and her boyfriend, 39 year old Leon Jacob, are accused of trying to hire a hitman to kill both of their exes. The couple now charged with soliciting capital murder. And today we're learning more about their background. Channel 2's Bill Spencer is live with all the latest developments. Bill, what have we learned? Well, Jonathan and Sian, we are learning brand new details all about this case, including some very interesting information about how the police actually managed to capture these two people who, again, are accused of wanting to pay big money to have their exes killed. Veterinarian Valerie McDaniel and her live-in boyfriend, Leon Jacob, facing serious charges right now after investigators say they plotted to kill McDaniel's ex-husband and Jacob's ex-girlfriend. It was determined that the defendant wanted the CI to ensure that the witness, the complainant uh, in, the, in the case, the stalking case, would be killed so she wouldn't testify. Now, according to the district attorney's office, the pair tried to hire an undercover Houston police officer who was posing as a hitman. The price, $10,000 a piece and two Cartier watches. Police then went to work getting the two targets to pose for photos, showing a realistic crime scene. One, a deadly carjacking, the other, a kidnapping with a victim available to be killed. Detectives say the photos were then used to convince Jacobs and McDaniel that the targets were dead. And when money finally exchanged hands, the two were then arrested. Three days after she was arrested, Valerie McDaniel was released on $50,000 bond. Valerie would record her final thoughts on her iPad. Okay, March 25th, it's been a few days. I, I hope I don't repeat myself. Chad told me later that he was going to try to help me, that he would try to get Mac to leave me alone. And uh, at the same time, he was, he was working to try to get Megan to go back to Pittsburgh. It's weird, things, it wasn't like bam, 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 a progression. Things just gradually happened. There was talk all the time about this, and it just normalized things. It's so strange, it's hard to explain, but talking about somebody trying to, to quiet Mac and make him leave me alone just became like, oh, okay, it's, it's normal. <laughs> In retrospect, not so normal. And it just progressed. It's terrible. <laughs> and the one thing that I hope people know, and I hope comes out, is that at one point when I was talking to the officer, I said, "Can't you just talk to him and make him change, make him be nice to me?" And he cut me off real quickly and said, "No, no, no, no. He wasn't going to give me a chance to go to back down." I would have if he'd said that. I really would. I didn't want to hurt Mac. I never did. I'm so sorry about everything. I don't want to hurt anyone. Just me. Okay. Thank you for listening. Bye. Two days later, on March 27th, 2017, she jumped off her seventh floor balcony to her death, leaving Leon to face a trial by jury alone. Bill, we are learning a brand new information. This coming to us from the medical examiner just now, officially ruling this a suicide. Yellow crime scene tape surrounded the gates of this high rise in River Oaks, where veterinarian Dr. Valerie McDaniel took her life this morning by jumping from the building onto a courtyard. Police do not suspect foul play. There was nobody at home. Uh, it was a reporter. It was someone that, that either worked at the inside the apartment complex or condominium complex, and they reported to the police that there was a, a body laying out there. They didn't know if she was asleep or what until the officers came out and found her. 
The Harris County District Attorney's Office says her fingerprints helped positively identify her this afternoon. Just two weeks ago, she walked out of jail free on bond. She and live-in boyfriend Leon Jacob are charged with soliciting capital murder. They were accused of plotting. Valerie's friends would say that during the only eight weeks actually Leon and Valerie were together, he had completely changed her. They rarely saw her and it was really him that was kind of responsible for the entire thing. Leon was charged with two counts of solicitation of capital murder relating to the plot. He pled not guilty. First of all, tell me how you are, how you're doing. I'm good. Um, I'm okay. I've been here 90 Five days, I think, today. It's been a long haul so far. I'm awaiting bonds still. I'm not this, you know, greatest person in the world, but I certainly am not a villain mm -hmm. that they've made me out to be. I'm a very driven, type A, alpha personality male, but I have a heart of gold. Um, I would give my last dollar to somebody if they needed it. Um, if you interview the people upstairs, I have a lot more than a lot of people that are here. I order a tremendous amount of commissary. I think this morning I had three full bags show up and I usually just give it away. I don't eat most of it. Um, I love to work. I like to play. Um, I'm an avid golfer and skier and I work out a lot. Leon's court case then began in 2018. And uh, then Leon's attorneys get this. They argued that um, what Leon thought he was doing was hiring a private investigator to help him get back with Megan, not kill her. So, I mean, come on, simple mistake to make though, really killing her, get back together with her. Easy mistake. A jury found Leon guilty of both counts of solicitation of capital murder after deliberating for less than two hours. He was sentenced to life in prison and ordered to pay a $10,000 fine. He will not be eligible for parole for 30 years. We, the jury, having found the defendant Leon Philip Jacob guilty of solicitation of capital murder, assess his punishment at confinement in the Institutional Division of the Texas Department of Criminal Justice for Life, assess a fine in the amount of $10,000. Thank you. You may be seated. Do you have anything to say, Mr. Jacob, before I pronounce these sentences? No, sir. Okay. It's the order of the court, then, Mr. Jacob, that you having been found guilty of two cases of solicitation of capital murder be now delivered by the Sheriff of Harris County to the Director of the Institutional Division of the Texas Department of Criminal Justice, where on both cases you shall serve a life sentence and be fully credited with all the time that you've already served on this case. All right, thank you. You convinced me to leave my life I had in Pittsburgh, and you convinced me it was awful. You manipulated me to leave my family in the life I had. I believe everything happens for a reason. While you sit in jail, I hope you think of me, the girl that you called poor and uneducated. Because it's because of me, you will be in prison for life. You will never see your children grow up. You will not be a part of their lives, and they will be better for it. Leon's defense attorney said they plan on um, filing an appeal, so good luck with that. Weird case, definitely one of the more uh, bizarre ones I've covered. Kind of funny, but uh, ultimately tragic, and that Valerie would rather take her own life than uh, live with the plot she had planned, leaving her child alone, and facing, you know, prison. Ah oh, well, at least Leon now has at least 30 years in prison to go through all the mistakes he made in this plot, of which there were many. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, if you'd like to watch some more of my videos, please work away. And I also have a Patreon where there are some exclusive videos, ask me any things, and I put videos up there a little bit earlier as well. Take care of yourselves. I will see you, as always, real soon in the next video. All the best, Mike Evans.